Professor Yerby trying to cause an effect. Enjoy. Hey, Professor Yerby here. In this video, we are going to be looking at ethical behavior while working within the realm of digital forensics. So in this learning module, we're saying for computer forensics examiners maintaining the highest level of ethical behavior and work is essential. In chapter 16 of the digital forensics textbook, you'll learn about how to apply uh, ethics and codes of conduct to their work, giving expert testimony. Computer forensic examiners are responsible for meeting the highest standards when conducting uh, examinations, preparing reports, giving testimony to ensure that evidence is accurate, reliable, and impartial. So a big part of uh, working in forensics is reporting and writing. And again, it's we've kind of stressed this from the very beginning that your job as a forensic specialist or a forensics investigator is not to uh, paint the picture how you want when you're working for the public sector. It's to report what you find, recreate the, the, the chain of events or the crime scene, and just report exactly what's there. The interpretation is a, a separate part of uh, the process. But as an investigator, you're just providing evidence that's accurate, reliable, and typically impartial. That line can become a little blurred when you're working in the private sector and you're working uh, for a client who's trying to catch a specific individual. So you would still definitely report evidence that is accurate and reliable. You have to maintain your integrity. You have to maintain ethics. Uh, but this impartial bit here depending on where you're working could become a, just a tiny bit gray. Uh, again, if you're working in the public sector, uh, you really need to follow these. Private sector, there's a there's definitely room to argue that that could be changed. So here is a, a, forensic, a digital forensic certification board and some of their code of ethics uh, that they, that they uh, like to uh, encourage so certificates pledge themselves to work with integrity and professionalism uh, they have a professional obligation to their clients and to each other without uh, with, that includes without limitation subordination and self-interest and interest of others so then they list a, a a code of ethics and standards working in any field hopefully you'll you'll act ethically uh, working as a graduate of this program, hopefully you'll act ethically. Working anything with IT, you'll typically find yourself with privileged information or privileged uh, ability to access files, information, and you really have to to be mature and be uh, show show integrity. Uh, keep keep confidential um, information confidential you wouldn't share that you wouldn't use that for personal gain uh, or something uh, but this this uh, file here which I'll, I'll post in the desire to learn learning module gives several different things uh, that people should do or not do so such as not engage in or pressure others to engage in any conduct that is harmful to the profession of digital forensics, including illegal or unethical activity, technical misrepresentation, distortion, uh, falsification, misrepresentation of education, training, credentials, experience, demonstrate commitment to integrity, uh, professionalism, diligence, uh, avoid any actions that could appear as a conflict of interest. Uh, comply with all lawful orders of court, show no bias with respect to findings or opinions, uh, express no opinion with respect to guilt or innocence of any party. And again, depending on, on what you're working on, uh, this will be, you know, sometimes this, you could find this as a internal moral conflict when you're, you're faced with some evidence that may... Um, be opposed to your your own moral standards of whatever the, the the issue may be but your your job is to 
uh, give accurate information not to change anything um, then the next thing is easier to not disclose or really any confidential or privileged information obtained during an engagement without proper authorization so I have an intern application of someone that's working on doing an internship at the Georgia Bureau of Investigation and I was comparing that to some of the the recommendations in the document that we're just looking at uh, so it gives some some information and it tells you about things that could automatically disqualify you from from the program such as misrepresentation or falsification of any of the application or background information uh, drug history uh, there's a good bit about drug history here uh, deliberate association of a personal nature with any person who's used more drugs here uh, or conduct any activity that reflects a disregard for local state or federal laws uh, which conflicts with the standards of behavior or the ethical practices of the GBI uh, they have a polygraph they'll go through that's a good bit of stuff let's see there's a part that I really want to get to here uh, so this is an awareness statement so this is just saying uh, that when you come on to work there there is a Georgia Computer Systems Protection Act it provides protection of public and private sector computer systems and compute uh, including all the networks uh, let's see the act establishes four criminal offenses that are all major felonies for violating the act and the criminal penalties they list the penalties here five 15 years 50,000 uh, but what it is the criminal penalties for disclosing or attempting to disclose techniques or methods employed to ensure the security of privacy of information or data contained in the Georgia criminal justice information system so that's part of this this law that's uh, here if, if you go into working for an agency you'll see that not only should you act professionally but there's an additional motivation uh, that there's legal uh, criminal actions that can be pursued against you then there is uh, guidelines that you will not divulge or discuss with anyone other than GBI personnel information that might be exposed through the internship which includes intelligence information, arrest or criminal history, forensic laboratory results, operational information, of the work unit, uh, and then say, I, I understand that failure to comply with the guidelines can lead to dismissal and criminal prosecution. So follow GBI policies, procedures, all of my notes, papers, memoranda must be reviewed by the supervisor before it's made to any other person outside of the GBI. Uh, you have to keep yourself in a non-participant role when working with sworn personnel uh, if you operate a state vehicle yeah 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 uh, I will require administrative duties let's see but overall what I wanted to, to, to convey there is that ethics are extremely important in uh, digital forensics it's important in any field that you go to work in but in digital forensics, you're you're literally working uh, with uh, people's lives in in many cases with what's going to end up happening with them, uh, and any intentional errors or misrepresentations on your part could really have a, a dr dr drastic, uh, dramatic influence on someone's future. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind. Forensics. Uh, ethics is extremely important it's always important everywhere you go but very important here so that's it so we'll see how long i rambled on thanks hope you enjoyed this